What's going on guys? In this video we're going to be discussing args and quarks and I'll be giving you some examples of how they're used within the Python language. So let's start off with args and quarks. So uh, basically args allows your function to accept an unspecified arbitrary amount of arguments and quarks allows you to accept unspecified arbitrary amount of keyword arguments. Now what does that mean? So basically, when you create a function, when you code up a function, you have to specify how many arguments this function is going to take. So there are cases where you don't know beforehand how many arguments your function should take. So there are cases where you want to be a little flexible on that front. So you don't know beforehand how many arguments your function should be allowed to take and you want to have flexibility in that sense. Asterisk args allows you to do that. Now one key thing is that these args and quarks are actually not keywords. These are sort of placeholders and they can be replaced by any other word. The key aspect that you should be sort of paying attention to are this asterisk and asterisk, this double asterisk and this single last year. So these args and quarks just used for simplicity, but they can be replaced by anything. So be careful with that. Pretty much everyone just uses args and quarks sort of because that's the Python standard. So let's just dive right into an example to get a better understanding. So here is print args and it's going to take an arbitrary amount of args because I'm specifying with this asterisk. And what I'm going to do is just print these args. These are my arguments and we're going to print. All right, so run this. Now this uh, print args, I'm going to send in one, two, three different arguments, a list, a tuple, and a dictionary. So I'll run this. These are my arguments. So as you can see, the function had no problem accepting an arbitrary amount of arguments. So now let's jump into keyword arguments. Keyword arguments are essentially keyword arguments. So they're the same thing as arguments, but these are arguments that you give specific values to. So above, we didn't really give any uh, specific values to these arguments. So these are just regular arguments. But when you give values to them, so for x equals hello and y equals test, these are considered keyword arguments. And keyword arguments are stored as a dictionary so key value format. So in order to print them, I have to print them out like as if they're a dictionary and extract the key and value. If I run this and then uh, run this, as you can see, it'll print the key and value. So that's basically the gist of it. Args allows an unspecified amount of arguments into your function and quarks allows an arbitrary amount of keyword arguments. So let's just dive into some examples of when they're used and how you can use them. So let's say we created an add function that you want to be, you want to allow to take an unspecified amount of arguments. So in that case, you have an asterisk and you, in that case, in the function signature itself, you can use asterisks and args. So this will allow you to take in as many arguments as you want. And what we're going to do is with my sum is zero. And if the argument can't be converted into an int, we just uh, skip it. And those that can be converted to int, we will add the sum and return my sum. So this is a, a pretty simple function. You guys could take a deeper look at it if you want. But okay, so you add three and four. So in this case, we're adding two. In the function call, we're giving it two arguments. And now in this uh, function call, we're inserting three different arguments. So as you can see, this is the flexibility. You can insert as many arguments as you want. Now we have decorators. Okay. Decorators also is a, a good example of how args and quarks are used. So I'm not going to go into decorators, but I'll give you a simple overview. If you guys want to actually get a, a better look at understanding decorators, you can look at the Python concepts closure video I have. So if you look at within the Python concepts playlist, you'll see that I made a video on closures, which is pretty much what decorators are. A decorator essentially creates a wrapper around the functions. Say you have an existing function and you want to add extra uh, functionality to that function, you can sort of decorate it or, or create a wrapper and add the extra functionality within the wrapper and then call the function with this extra sort of functionality. So you're sort of creating a wrapper around the function to give it more sort of functionality. Now, the cool part about decorators is that you can use it on all types of functions. So you don't have to just decorate one function. You can use the same decorator on multiple types of functions. So here's where the flexibility is needed. When you use it on multiple functions, you don't know beforehand how many arguments that function is going to take. So some of them will take just a couple arguments. Some of them will take, you know, four or five, and they'll take multiple keyword arguments as well. So this is where you can make use of args and quarks. So essentially, this use of args and quarks allows us to accept sort of all types of functions. And we're able to call that function with uh, args and quarks. So this is pretty much the gist of it. I will probably make a future video regarding decorators to get a better understanding. But here are two examples. So now we're going to be decorating uh, this add function and we'll be decorating this print function. Now, as you can see, the add takes two arguments and print name takes only one argument. But since we're using args and quarks, it, it doesn't matter how many arguments the decorated function takes 
because we're using args and quarks, so we have the added flexibility. So if I run these, just run this first. Okay, I ran these two now. So since add has been decorated, it should be printing out our inner func is func.name as well. So in this case, we're allowed to give it two arguments because that's what the inner function, the decorated function is expecting. So I run this and our inner function add and we get the answer as well. Now, since print name has been decorated as well, what we're going to do is we're just going to feed it one argument, which is the name, and uh, running this function will have no problems as well. So this function was decorated as well, despite just having one argument. So here, our inner function is print name and hello there, mudra. So as you can see, by using args and quarks, it allows decorators to be a little more flexible. So that was example number two. Now, args and quarks are also used within subclassing as well. And subclassing essentially is borrowing from your parent class. So instead of creating a whole new class, what you can do is you can subclass or borrow the framework or the sort of blueprint of your original class and just make a couple of modifications. So subclassing allows you to save time by borrowing the blueprint of an existing class and just making a few modifications. So here we're doing the same thing. We have a superclass, the original class or the mother class, and we have a subclass that we're going to be going to be borrowing from the uh, superclass itself. Now, when you borrow from the superclass, you have to specify the X and Y argument. When you borrow from the superclass in the older Python, I think you had to sort of specify the sort of attributes. So in this case, X and Y, you would have to write that here. So when you subclass using args and quarks, you don't have to specify this X and Y. You can just use args and quarks instead. So instead of actually knowing which attributes the original subclass has, you can just use args and quarks, and it's sort of a, a lazy way to, instead of writing everything out, to borrow all the original attributes. So in the subclass, we're using args and quarks to represent the uh, original attributes of the parent class, and self.z is going to be the modified or the extra attribute that you're adding. So this is just a, a simple example of another way that args and quarks are used. So if I run this, uh, let's see. So we're going to create an object, a test of the superclass blueprint. So if I run this, if I, and then test should have two attributes, X and Y. So if I run this again, you'll see that it's able to, of course, print uh, two and three, which I sort of specified when I instantiated the class. So now we have test two, which is going to be the my subclass. And this should be taking three arguments because we're borrowing the X and Y using args and quarks. And we have one extra value or one extra attribute of self.z, which equals z. So if I run this now, it should be printing out 981 because first we specify z, and then this is x and this is y because z and then args and quarks. Test two, if we run this, now remember I'm printing x, y, z. So x is 8, y is 9, and z is 1. So it should be 891, and we get 891. So if this was a little confusing, sorry about that. I'll have to create in a more in-depth video on object-oriented programming, but I just wanted to give you guys uh, simple examples or just to show you how orgs and quarks are used just so you can get a basic understanding of what they do and how they could potentially be used or abused. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful. Just leave some comments and let me know what you thought. And if there's something you're confused about, you can let me know as well. So I'll see you guys in the next video.